Solicitors. Rapid Solicitors, sponsors of the Elite Ice Hockey League on Sky Sports. Accident compensation and medical negligence claims. Welcome to the Rapid Solicitors Elite Ice Hockey League Highlight Show here on Sky Sports. As you can see, we've been turfed out of our studio and sent to Hull. Mind you, not the worst possible time to be coming here to the Hull Ice Arena with the Stingrays winning four of their last six games. Things are looking up for the whole Hull organisation. Maybe a reason for that is local ownership. Bobby McEwen took control of the club back in the summer and it's the first time the Stingrays have had local ownership in over a decade. We'll be speaking to Bobby a little bit later in the show and also seeing extended highlights of tonight's really important Gardner Conference game between the Stingrays and the Brayhead clan. More on that later but before that we go straight to hockey action from last Friday and Dundee Stars, that team with the impressive home record, taking on the league leaders the Belfast Giants. Chris Ellis will talk you through it. League and Cup points on offer in this one and both had qualified for the quarter-finals of the Challenge Cup so it was more a case of jostling for position and then of course much more importantly league points on offer and this one. First period action, an end-to-end -end at this point before Ryan finds a break right-hand side over the shoulder of the netminder and he scores his 14th goal of the season. He was to end the weekend with 41 points and leading the league in the point scoring charts. Still in the first period, Sam Roberts, left-hand side, starts to create a move for the visitors to try and get them on the board for the first time in this game. It's good movement from the visitors and there was just a scrappy rebound, but it won't matter. It was Garside scoring, Phillips and Lloyd with the assist, so 13-40 gone. We're level at 1-1. To period two, and again, it was a right scramble in front of the net, but Fournier wasn't going to miss that opportunity. Toe and Rycroft with the assist this time, 21-37. So at the start of the second period, it's 2-1 to the visitors. Then Mason and Keith down the right-hand side, and right in front of the net was Lloyd, his fifth of the year. He made it 3-1 at 25-31 and it was all Belfast. It continued to be that way just past the midway point of the game. This time, Toe and Mason getting the assist. It was Mason's shot right-hand side, and the rebound came to Fournier. A tenth of the year for him, a second of the game, 4-1, and Dundee had to come back and see if they could stage a remarkable comeback. Well, they got one, it was Wirral, an 11th of the year, that one on the power play, so that was 4-2. So going into the third, there was certainly some hope that they could get back into this game. But the Giants broke two on one, and the goal was for Peacock, a sixth of the year. Final score, Dundee 2, Belfast 5. The Belfast Giants start the weekend off with a bang and an excellent victory up in Dundee against Jeff Hutchins' Stars. Time for more action now and four teams that are all expecting to be challenging for honours when the awards are ended out at the end of March. The Brayhead clan entertained the Sheffield Steelers whilst Gerard Adams took his Cardiff Devils team into the NIC in Nottingham. Chris Ellis will talk you through these two games. Brayhead had hit some poor form recently and of course have been making changes so a win was vital in front of their own fans but the first goal of the night went to the visitors Limbright and Gertsen with the assist and Sestito an easy tap in at the back door goal number six of the season that was then 1-0 in the early stages a good move in front of the net from Limbright there great pass from Gertsen and at 10.04 it was 2-0 to the Sheffield Steelers and it was one-way traffic. It got even better. Sestito and Limbright combined this time. And the shot there from Savage, a deflection. But it was 3-0, 17-43 gone. And the Brayhead clan fans had that sinking feeling. But into the second period, and on an early power play, Galbraith all alone at the back door. Goldie and Kostanovic with the assists. 
13th of the year for Jade Galbraith, and that made it 3-1. Hope then for the Brayhead clan. But the Steelers were like a machine in this game. It was 4-1 when Sestito had a rebound, a couple of attempts at net there. But at 27-43, the Steelers were well in front. They then came forward again. Lovely play from Ashley Tate. What a move from the British international to go right-hand side. He sets up shields for a 13th of the year. That was 5-1. And then Le Gui, lovely solo goal, cuts in from the left. It was 6-1. 45-19. The points were going home to Sheffield. But there was still time for a couple more goals. First of all, Brayhead Clamp just trying to get things moving and just trying to get some cheer for their fans. And on the rebound, Miller, a fifth of the year for the NHLer. But there was time for another NHLer to complete his hat trick. And there he is, in off the net, minder. That's agonizing for him. But Sestito gets three, the Steelers get seven. Clan two, Sheffield seven. Nottingham had six home wins in a row going into this one. A crowd of five and a half thousand in the NIC. Second period action on the power play. Ling's pass, a clever pass. Weaver right on the doorstep for Graham. Attempt of the year. Nottingham leading then 22-53 gone. Still second period action. Nice movement in front of the net. Francis and Graham this time. And a solo skate from the blue line from Gadavan. A fifth of the year for him. A nice goal from him. Nottingham leading by two goals to nil. Really was a good first part of the period. Lakovic and then the rebound from Matthew Myers against his former club. We hadn't even reached the halfway point and Nottingham were leading by three goals to nil. They had 14 shots in this period and there's another goal. A tip from Galavan making it 4-0. And that's the way it was at the end of the second period. Myers wins the face-off in the third. Lakovic gets the puck on net. And the rebound from Myers, his second of the night. Strong work from him, a seventh of the year. So that's 5-0. That's the end of the scoring. But it got feisty in the closing stages. Devin Didiamiti, unluckily, I think, falls into Kowalski. He didn't see it that way. The two of them start to pair off. Stevie Lee just tries to stop it. So it turned into a bit of a battle between the two of them. Didn't last that long. And the pair of them got two plus two for roughing. Nottingham take the points then. Final score, Panthers five, Cardiff nil. A huge win for the Sheffield Steelers in Brayhead, whilst Craig Kowalski shuts out the Cardiff Devils at the NIC. Time for a break now, when we come back, more action from Belfast at the Odyssey Arena and the Coventry Blaze at the Sky Dome. Don't go anywhere. Sponsors of the Elite Ice Hockey League on Sky Sports. Sponsors of the Elite Ice Hockey League on Sky Sports. Welcome back to the Rapid Solicitors Elite Ice Hockey League Highlight Show here on Sky Sports, where we're at the Hull Ice Arena to watch the game between the Stingrays and the Brayhead clan in the Gardner Conference. Before that, though, more action from Saturday night. The Belfast Giants taking on the Edinburgh Capitals at the Odyssey Arena, and also Jeff Hutchins and the Dundee Stars making the trip to the Sky Dome Arena to take on the Coventry Blaze. As ever, Chris Ellis will talk you through it. Edinburgh arrived in Belfast and had backup Craig Holland in net, and he was certainly a busy man throughout the game. First goal of the night went to Roberts of the Belfast Giants. Stewart and Peacock with the assist. 1 0 Belfast at 13 39. Goal number two came on the backhand for Greg Stewart. Clark and Peacock with the assist this time. A 2 0 first period lead. In the third, well, players lined up to score at the back door. First of all, ghosting in is Clark, a ninth of the year. A third assist in a row for Peacock there. Stewart with the other one. It then became 4-0. This time Lloyd had time to control and fire past Craig Holland in net. The Giants celebrated goal number four and they were celebrating five and six before the period was out. First of all, right on the doorstep, a battling goal here. Just getting himself to the puck and over the line for Garside. So that was five. And on the power play with the clock ticking down, 
11 seconds to go in period two. Alone at the back door, Mason, a third of the year. So 6-0 after two periods. Two period three and the goals kept on coming. Peacock had been getting a hat load of assists when he scores there from the slot. That's 7-0, a minute and one second into the third period. And then at 45-50, it was Clark there with a the 10th goal of the year. That made it 8-0. And there was still time for Lloyd to get a goal number seven of his season to make it nine. Haleko pulled one back for Edinburgh, and that was a consolation. Belfast nine, Caps one. This was the second meeting of these two sides this season. The first came opening weekend, when Dundee looked like they would skate to victory in their own barn, but the Coventry Blades came through to win 3-2 after a shootout. First goal of the night was a right scramble, but the man to get the touch that was vital. Venus, a second of the year, so 7.29 gone. 1-0 to the Coventry Blaze. To period two then, and it was one-way traffic. 21 shots on goal for Coventry, only six for the Dundee Stars. It was no surprise when the home side got goal number two. Jadita's shot tipped in by Venus. A third of the year then, a second of the game, 2-0. Now count the seconds here. This is a resulting face-off. It's won there by Greg Leave. It shoots, and then it goes right-hand side for Bradley. And that is 3-0. Six seconds later, after goal number two, was goal number three. Poor defending by the Dundee Stars. It continued to be just one-way traffic, as I said earlier. Shoot behind the net, working hard. Beleski is involved as well. But the final touch in front of the net was from Shoot. A tenth of the year then for him. And the free-scoring defenceman has another goal to his tally. It was more goal action in front of the Dundee net in the second period. We're still not at the end, and I'm sure the Stars were just begging the second interval to come. The Stars try and get moving forward left-hand side. They barely had a look in in period two, but Coventry were ruthless coming forward. They took some time to get this move going, but when they did, they came left-hand side and they pressured Beleski, a great win of the puck, and then in front of the net, the puck came to Judis and goal number five, scored by him as seventh of the year. End of two periods for a 5-0 lead. Into period three, it was much quieter in terms of goals. It was still 14 shots on goal for the Blaze and nine for the Stars, but Guthrie's wraparound wrapped the game up. It finishes Coventry six, Dundee nil. So two convincing victories for two of the league's big guns. The Edinburgh Capitals going down 9-1 at the Odyssey, but Young Holland in goal for the Caps. And then perhaps a surprise level of margin, if you like, for the victory of the Coventry Blaze over the Dundee Stars. Well, at the top of the show, we talked about the whole Stingrays and how things were going better, not only on the ice, but off the ice as well for the Stingrays franchise. Maybe a reason for that was local ownership, something this club hadn't had in over a decade. Well, I'm delighted to be joined by the new owner of the whole Stingrays, Bobby McEwen. And uh, Bobby, you are coming in a tracksuit, you put the suit on, it's a multitude of hats that you're wearing right now. Seven days a week, yeah, I agree with you there. We've got every job to do. We're a small club. We've just got to fill in the spaces that we need to fill in. Last year, you were part of the club. You saw it from the outside, well, from the inside looking out. When you came to take it over, has it been as big a task as you thought, a bigger task, or actually are people more responsive to you because of the localness of you and you found it a little easier, perhaps? I found it's actually a bit of everything there. Everything you've just said there is the local ownership. Uh, obviously things have went wrong in the past, I've been here for 25 years with it so I know a lot of people, a lot of businesses have trusted me, we're getting some good sponsorship on board, new sponsorship to the club that we never had before, so we're getting opportunities elsewhere. There does seem to be a feel of optimism around Hull where for the past few years you've come here as an outsider and you thought oh it's Hull, where here you come here now and there seems to be a bit more of a, a, a jump in people's step. Well, for me, one thing I wanted to do was get the fans on board to help us. If you don't have the fans coming to help you, uh, we've got a great, small, hard core of fans, and they're working their socks off to make the club survive, and that was what we said at the beginning. We would come in, try and support the club, give them as best as we could, player-wise, and Sylvan's put a great team together this year, I say, and that's one of the things that, that's helped us. We're winning a lot of games. How hard is it wearing your coaching hat to think we'll spend more money on players, we'll get better players in, this is the way forward, and then you go home and you sit down and you think, hold on, I've got my owner's hat on now, we can't afford to do that, we've got to be prudent. How, how's that differential? 
Well, we actually had a conversation at the fans forum you done with us, and that was one of the things you asked me, what's, what's the target for the year? I said, if we finish bottom of the table and financially stable and secure with a club this year, we'll move on from there, we'll do it gradually. That was where my thoughts were originally. Yeah, there's times as a coach you want to say, right, go get better players, but at the end of the day, we've got to make sure this club's financially stable. OK, talk us now with your coaching hat on today. This game against the Brayhead clan, it's in your own conference, it's huge, isn't it? It's massive. Uh, we just... The point we got in Fife last night obviously gave us a joint top in the conference, which I'm really happy with. I uh, didn't expect to be there so soon, but it's the thing that we feel that we've got a chance. If we've got three games against Brayhound now back to back, and if we can win these three games, that's massive for us. OK, well, we wish you the very best of luck in tonight's game. Now, though, time for more hockey action. And Bobby, last night was in Kakadi. It was rumbustuous in the old barn as the Stingrays took on the Five Flyers. Chris Ellis will talk you through it. This was the fourth meeting between these two sides this season. Two wins for Hull in front of their own fans, one for five. So the Flyers here looking to level the series at 2-2. First goal of the night was a right scramble. The final touch there from Osman, a 13th of the year for him. 11-13 gone to make it 1-0. And that's the way it stayed at the end of the first period. Then a fantastic solo skate from Jason Pitton. One end of the ice to the other. Haynes provided the pass for Hogg to score a 12th goal of the year, and we were level here at 1-1. Still in the second period, the goals continue to come, and here we have real end-to-end -end stuff. The shot from right-hand side, and that's McAlpine, forges his way through, and Gunn and Keister getting the assist there, 31-46. And we see the scoreline at 2-1 to the home side. But it continued to be end-to-end, -end. there was 17 shots on goal in the period, and that was a lovely finish from Tandler, a 15th of the year. 2-2, and that's the way it stayed, going into overtime and then penalty shots. The first one was Osman, wide for the Stingrays. So, Pitton, who provided that brilliant move to score Fife's first goal. He scores, then we go to the other end for Ozzelins. Ozzelins loses control, so 1-0 up in the shootout. This could be the winning goal for Chamon, the new boy. He can't score, so there's a chance then for Jeremy Tendler to get the visitors back into the shootout. The save is made by Pitton, and that is a Flyers with the extra point. Final score, 5-3, Hall 2. So three wins out of the last three home games for the Five Flyers. That place in Kakadi is a tough barn to go and play in. They get the extra point in three in the game against the Hull Stingrays. Time for a break now. When we come back, I'll be speaking to Jay Galbraith. And remember, it's not a stick, it's a wand he carries. Don't go anywhere. Sponsors of the Elite Ice Hockey League on Sky Sports. Sponsors of the Elite Ice Hockey League on Sky Sports. Welcome back to the Rapid Solicitors Elite Ice Hockey League Highlight Show here on Sky Sports, where we're at the Hull Ice Arena to see the Stingrays take on the Brayhead clan. Talk about the Brayhead clan, you yeah, talk about Jade Galbraith, last year's Elite League Player of the Year. What a good opportunity for me to catch up with him just a few moments ago. Jade, one of the most experienced guys in our league now, second year back in um, Brayhead. Just give us a progress report, because from the outside, it's, it's looking a little bit up and down. Yeah, it's um, it's one of those things that um, you know you never know how the year's going to go. At the start of the year, you know we had high hopes, and we still have high hopes. Me and Jordan, you know, uh, Jordan's done a great job. You know, things just not gone the way we wanted to consistent consistency wise. Uh, you know, some games we play uh, and we play unbelievable, um, get the wins against good teams, and then some days, you know, we just don't have the effort that we want. And and Jordan, um, you know, we've been way better in practice lately. Um, you know, and we've been playing better. Just you know, last night was a tough one. Um, just wasn't what we wanted. Uh, Sheffield played unbelievable, and we just we just couldn't get the win. So consistency-wise, you know, we we got to be better. We got to be in every game, and we we can't we can't let games slip away in the first period. So, you know, I think um, we're on the right track right now. You know, we're we're trying to do the things that that we need to do to win. And and uh, Jordan's doing a great job, and I'm, we're all 100% behind him. Um, because I think we are going to do, do do good things this year. 
It was a tough job he had, wasn't it? Especially at the back end, because you lost that rock-solid core of, of Wedderburn, Bannister and Jorgensen. And it, it's hard to replace guys like that, isn't it? Oh, definitely. You know, Drew, Drew's playing in the NHL. You know, he's got his resume speaks for himself. You know, Jorgensen had a great rookie campaign. You know, that's why he's playing in Sheffield. Now he, he did a great job. And Tim Wedderburn, probably the best defensive defenseman in the league. Uh, unbelievable. We, we tried to sign him all year to get him to come back. You know, he just had a good good thing going for him. How difficult is it then for somebody like Kristanovic, Galbraith, who are stars of the team, things aren't going well. Do you feel more pressure on you to try and perhaps over try and do a little bit too much? Well, definitely. You know, Jordan even told me it's it's tougher than people, people think. You know, coaching, playing, and he just had a kid too. So, you know, all that bottled up and it's a tough and I give him a, a lot of credit credit with the way he's done he's done a great job with all that you know brand new coach and, and and a new pretty much a new team so you know he's done a great job and any player coach that does it I give him a lot of respect um, so but pressure wise you know definitely I feel it you know with the year I had last year and I'm, I'm not you know I'm not playing the way I, I can play right now and it's it's frustrating but um, you know Jordan you know I know he wants to be winning more and doing what he can and we all do it's just one of those things that you know hockey's a funny game you know things can go great forever and then they can go in the dumps forever. So, you know, I think we just got to work, keep working at it and, and try to, you know, get this thing out of uh, out of the hole that we're in. Right and tonight, Gardner Conference game, big game. You come in here a little bit short-handed. Your expectations? Um, well, definitely. You know, we play all three games in the next three. Our three of our games are against them in the next three games. You know, we play them Sunday, Tuesday, and, and Saturday. And so, or Thursday and Saturday. So, you know, this game is going to set the tone for the next two. And these are conference games that we have to win. And even for the league, you know, we, gotta, we can't be where we're at right now. We, we, we have uh, expectations that we have to meet. So these games are going to be a big battle, especially, you know, with short, being short-staffed and everything, too. It's going to be it's going to take a lot of uh, the guys to reach down, and, and, and myself included, to, um, you know, try to pull out these wins. So, you know, we're, we're really looking forward for these three games to set the tone for the rest of the year. Jake Albraith, he'll of course be hoping to have a big impact on tonight's game. Two guys who are hoping he'll have no impact on the game at all are Craig and Paul, Hull Stingray supporters. Craig, start with you. Seems to be a bit more of a buzz about Hull at the moment. Is that down to the ownership change? Seems to be a bit fresher here. Yeah, it's uh, quite positive since like Bobby's taken over the club. So he's been in Hull for like 24 years. So it's quite good to have it, the ownership back in somebody from, you know, who's, who's so involved in Hull. You the know. packs were good people, weren't they? But they lived yeah. in Milton Keynes. Coventry had all that experience, but they were in Coventry. It really needed somebody here in the in the heart of the club to kind of regenerate it and get it going again, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the passion's there, you know. It's been around the club for 24 years, like we said previously. And it's good to have somebody involved and pushing the club and to obviously keep the future going, you know. Get as many seasons, you know, keeping involved as long as we can. Four out of six they've won at home, the whole Sting Grace. Home form's important, isn't it, Paul? And it seems like you guys have had something to cheer about the last few weeks. Yeah, as you say, it is. It's uh, very good because, as I say, the atmosphere, like the other week when we had played Coventry, the atmosphere, I've never known it like that for absolute years. And it's because everybody now is just getting behind Bobby and, like Clutes, is putting a decent team together who are actually playing for each other. Tell us about some of the new guys that have come in. Ozelin seems to have made a big impact. Scored some fantastic goals for you this year. Yeah, Ozzy, he's absolutely brilliant. His, his hands are absolutely phenomenal. When he took that penalty shot the other week, I mean, it was unreal. And do you share Craig's uh, view that the fresh ownership has kind of given Hull the boost that it needed? Oh, yeah, it's got the impetus that everybody is backing a local person. And, you know, hopefully the Bobby's seeing the re rewards from it. You know, with the actual attendances going up, and you know, the crap they are actually put in something on ice. For first, the of, first of three games against the clan tonight. Are yes. you going for a win? Yes. What do you reckon? First of three games, three big games in your conference. Yeah, I think it was a nice win. You know, four two, four well, score. That's what the fans think. What would Jay Galbraith and Jordan Kristanovic have to say? Here are the highlights now: the Holstein Greys against the Brayhead Clan. It's Gardner Conference action. Gardner conference action here, a terrific start for the whole Stingrays. Well, that in turn meant a terrible start for Brayhead. Face-off win from Silverthorne and Ozzelins and Dooley combine. Out left-hand side for Squires, 1-0 Hall Stingrays, 11 seconds gone in the game. One of the quickest goals of the season. No wonder those fans and those players 
are truly, truly ecstatic. You see it go past them like he must be so disappointed to concede so early doors. But Brayhead clan were resilient early parts of this game. It was Haywood who scored the tip there from Nicoletti's shot, but it was set up well by Robert Farmer. You'll see on the replay, strong work, good skills with the stick, and Nicoletti's shot there redirected by Haywood. 1-1, 12.05. In the blink of an eye, 20 seconds later, Galbraith behind the net, out in front, McPherson scores a fourth of the year. What a turnaround. You see Galbraith on the replay, he's strong. Perfect pass. 2-1 Brayhead and maybe Brayhead who are in poor form going into this one were going to get back into things and back into the swing and get some W's under their belt but at the other end it's Ozolins who begins this move also involved at Andre and Squires and also Cloutier and the crucial touch is from Cloutier the player coach in front of the net he's celebrating he gets his side back into the game and level at 2-2 had a few attempts Zemlat tried to keep it out but couldn't. So after one period, it's a 2-2 hockey game. Into period two, lovely move up the ice. It was free flowing and the assist went to Tendler and Davis. But 24-01 at the back door was Osman. A 14th goal of a terrific season for him. So now the home side were in front once more, 3-2. But it was nip and tuck. And Brayhead were to score again. Look at Galbraith, dangerous in front of the net. He gets the redirect on that one. 3-3. Three, three. We've only been playing 26 minutes and 49 seconds. Hall coming forward once more. Again, it was worked well, but then the puck fell loose behind the net. Silverthorne was the man who picked it up. Again, it seems a chance has gone, but no, there's Dooley right in the slot. 4-3 Stingrays then at 35-46. They get their notice in front once more. To period three, and was a one-goal game going to be enough? Well, Stingray's coming forward. The dump on net from Squires. It's not dealt with there by Zemlak, and Silverthorne jumps onto it. So at 41-58, for the first time in the game, one side has a bit of breathing space, and it is 5-3. But Brayhead were not going to give up with this one. Haywood and Burnstall this time getting the assist. It was a nice move up the ice, went right-hand side. The shot comes in, it's charged down, and the rebound came to Walker. So it was back to a one-goal game. We weren't even at the midway point of the third period, so anything could happen. Then it became a power play to the home side. Would they make that count? Strong work in the corner, initially there by Tendler, and it was Tendler who got a stick onto that one to score the final goal of the night. It finished in an exciting game. Full six, Greyhead Clan four. Jordan, we can tell by the look on your face you're an unhappy coach right now. No, not at all. I mean, uh, you know, we come into this game, eight forwards, four defence. I truly believe every single guy that played tonight battled and battled hard, you know. I don't want to blame things on goaltending, but right now, our goaltending is not even close up to par. I put Mike Will in because Emmer's skate blade comes off. I, you know, Will's yes goal in the net. They dump it in. I literally had flip dump in. He can't play it. Goes right to the guy and they score. It's not acceptable. It's, it's all I got right now, Simsy. I mean, right now, our goaltending is not acceptable. People talked about the defence, but at the end of the day, the goalies have to make some big saves. He had a great year in five last year. What's the difference this season? You know, Simsy, I wish I knew. I really do. I mean, obviously, he's not having as much pressure. You know, he's, he's not facing as many shots. Uh, you know, goaltending, is a, it's, it, it's, it's a confidence thing, too. I mean, it, and obviously, right now, he doesn't have it. I mean, you know, saying that, obviously, our defense, you know, hasn't been up to par. But, I mean, tonight, we played four, and I thought in the overall, they, the D did everything they could. I mean, it, 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 what, what we're doing is we're giving them, we're letting the timely goals that you cannot have to win hockey games. Every single guy in there is dog tired, but we're still battling, 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 and then we give up goals that shouldn't go in. You put, 40, you put 45 shots on Sheffield last night. You did a similar thing here in Hull today. It's not there where your problem lies, is it? No, it's not at all, and I've never thought it was. I've known from the start our offense is not our problem. I've known that from the start. 45 shots last night, 40 tonight. You know, we only get two goals last night. The Carroll played real well last night, you know. Tonight, yeah, Bounds played good too. I mean, he made some 
f f fantastic stop. But isn't that what you want your starting goalie to do? Isn't that what you expect of a starting goalie night in, night out? Uh, absolutely. To play in this league, I mean, you need you need your starter, like you say, night in, night out. There's games, you know, you're only going to face 20 shots. You got to save all 20, or you face 35. You got to make the timely stops. You know, like I said, I'm not blaming everything on it, but right now it is a big, big problem of ours. You have two options. You got to stick with him. You got to nurse the ego, or you got to make a move and you got to replace. Which is the two? Is he going to be? Yeah. Well, right now, uh, you know. Is that I'm talks? Not, I'm, I'm are those not, talks not, that have got to continue between you yeah, and the ownership? Yeah, we can't. I can't comment on that right, right now, Simsy. But I mean, obviously, there's, you know, I'm you're not short, happy. You're short already, Jordan, aren't you? With with players that have gone, you need bodies and you need them quickly. Absolutely. Like I said, we played with eight forwards and four defense tonight. I mean, you know, we had two defense go down last night. I mean, we released two players last week. We're already short of forward. Me and Asher double shifting all game last game. All game tonight, I mean, that takes its toll on you. And then when we have 2D go down, at least we had 60 last night, well, for, for half the game. But yeah, we, we need some bodies, obviously. That's, okay. that's simple as that. We can see the frustration. We wish you well in the search yeah. for new players. Yeah, okay, thanks, MZ. Clutes, another good win. Yeah, it was a big win for us. Uh, obviously, to beat Brayhead, uh, they're in our conference, and uh, we feel we can battle with them all season. And it was nice to get the two points tonight at home. You got top of the conference as well. Yeah, I mean we had a good weekend. I mean we got we got a point, a big point in Fife the other night, and then to get two points at home, to get three out of four, it's big for our team. It was a great team performance from the back end, we bounds right up to your forwards. Yeah, you know as a team, that's that's the way we're gonna win hockey games. We need to play as a group, as a unit. Uh, we don't have one player that's gonna win us hockey games. It's gonna be our three lines and. Like you said, starting from the back, we got to stick together, and that's the way we'll win hockey games. You got off to a great start. I don't think any of us expected Tom Squires' goal to find the top shelf like that. No, it was a nice shot by Squire. He uh, he went wide and uh, let a bullet go, and it got in. And uh, you know, obviously, you're always pulling for young guys to chip in. It was nice to see him put it in. Yeah, the clan came. They've got so much offense, haven't they? Kristanovic, Galbraith, and Goldie. They they did well. They got back ahead, but you dug in there, and really, once you went back ahead, you never looked like losing. No, I mean, we talked about it in, uh, in the dressing room. I mean, they, they got so much offense, like you're saying, that they got Miller too, you know, he's he's another guy you got to watch. And we said, if we take the lead, we get another goal. We got to make sure we got three guys high and we, we stick, we, we're on the D side of things. We can't get caught down low. They got too much offense. They can come back in the game anytime. When you came into the studio a couple of weeks ago, we talked about the conference team. It is working, isn't it? It shows that with the whole Stingrays guys top of their group. Yeah, it is good. I mean, uh, I think it's great. It, every night we got a chance to win a game, and it gives us confidence as a group. In the past, you know, we, we'd play five games in a row against Sheffield, Nottingham, Belfast, and you'd lose those games, and you'd lose your confidence and go play the Edinburgh, and you're not on, you're not on a high, and you end up losing those games. And, and now every night these guys believe they can win hockey games, and I think it's great. That's a pretty offensive team that you've just played tonight, and the Stingrays did a great job shutting them down. No, absolutely. Uh, anytime you got guys like Galbraith and... Uh, uh, Kristanovic and them out there. It's a year as a defenseman. You got to be ready every shift you're out there. They're coming, and you never know what to expect. So uh, yeah, we we did well today. You also had good transition as well, and you turned defense into attack as well, and you scored some great goals. Yeah, no, it's been good this year. Our, uh, the defense we have. I know we've been running with four guys, but uh, the guys we have been making the right. It's the, you know that first pass, and we've been getting it up to the forwards and. This year we got a lot of great skaters, so they've been just, you know, doing what they got to do once we get it to them. What is the difference this year then between this Stingrays team and the one from last year? What are you doing better? You know, I don't know. It's always tough getting players to come to Hall and stuff like that. And uh, this year we just, I think we got the right, uh, the, just the right chemistry. We got, you know, some small guys that got speed. We got some big guys that are, you know, uh, Hander's got that presence. He lets the young guys go. And uh, we also got a little toughness. Klutz is still a, still a warrior out there, so we've, we've got all the pieces right now. He's just an old rat now, isn't he? Hey, he makes me feel uh, young, so it's okay. <laughs> just a quick word about the one guy that's behind you as well, Ben Bounce. A lot of pressure on him coming in, but he seems to be doing an excellent job. Yeah, you know, uh, I'm not going to lie, even when I signed here, you, you know, you, you're not sure what you're to expect, but uh, hey, he's, uh, he's done well and, uh, you know, makes us play harder when you have a young goalie like that but he's definitely proven himself so it's, it's been helping us as well. Stingrays go top of the conference as well that's always a confidence boost isn't it? No absolutely like this next five six games are huge for us and uh, last night we got one point we should have maybe got two but hey we'll take three out of four this weekend. So a big victory for the whole Stingrays six to four over the Brayhead clan they now move into a playoff place displacing the five flyers who fall into the bottom two. 
Time for a break now. When we come back, we'll be joined by the Stingray's owner, Bobby McEwen, and we'll talk through the rest of the results and all the talking points in this week's Rapid Solicitors Elite Ice Hockey League. Don't go anywhere. Sponsors of the Elite Ice Hockey League on Sky Sports. Sponsors of the Elite Ice Hockey League on Sky Sports. Welcome back to the Rapid Solicitors Elite Ice Hockey League Highlight Show where we've been at the Hull Ice Arena seeing the Stingrays beat the Brayhead clan by six goals to four and I'm glad to be joined by the Stingrays owner Bobby McEwen and Bobby we spoke to you before the game you're expecting a tough battle it's exactly what you got but uh, you came out victorious. Yeah that's exactly what we said before the game started we knew it'd be a tough game uh, Brayhead's got a lot of offense and we knew they would have their chances uh, and that game could have went either way tonight. Important you got off to a good start Wow, what a start, 11 seconds. Can't complain with that, slap shot top corner, uh, fantastic. Uh, I think it's going to be one of the quickest goals in the Elite League this year, so yeah, we're happy with that. We're actually speaking here about 45 minutes after the game. There's been dancing on the ice, there's a lot of activity around this rink. Winning games is one thing, but filling the building and entertaining the, your punters is the other, and you seem to be doing that. There seems to be a, a buzz, we said it before the start of the game, and it's true, it feels like there's some progress being made here in Hull. Well, that's what we've got to think outside the box rather than just what we do with hockey. We're trying to do other things. We're making sure the kids are involved. We're making sure families are involved. And as you've seen tonight, with them all dancing on the ice and stuff and having fun. So that's part of the, the, the razzmatazz, if you want to call it, coming in to see a whole Stingrays game. You've moved into a playoff position. I know it's too early this year to talk about playoff spots, but what you've also done is gone top of the conference. Tomorrow morning when you're trying to sell this sport, this game, to the media and to everybody else, being top of the conference is a great selling point, isn't it? Oh, it's a fantastic selling point. Man. We've just got to keep working and doing what we do because the more we win, the, yeah, obviously we're going to fill the building eventually and that's the plan for the end of the season. We want to fill this building. Fill the building the whole Stingrays are trying to do right now. More games on Sunday night, and there was that battle of the bay, wasn't there? The rematch. Cardiff versus Coventry. Chris Ellis will talk you through it. Much of the talk going into this one was about the last time the two sides met in the big blue tent, of course, where there was fights at the end and lengthy bans for Cardiff players. No such shenanigans this time around, and the first goal of the night went the Cardiff Devils' way. Faulkner with the good work right-hand side, and Bissonnette with his sixth goal of the season. There was no goals in the first period, and that was the first scoring action just past the midway point of the second period. But goals came like bosses here. Batch and Didiamiti this time combining, and Harding right on the doorstep of first goal of the year for him. It was 2-0 to the home side. They were certainly in dreamland against their big rivals, Coventry Blaze. But at the other end, it was Mike Shute who went into the offensive zone. Great work from him. And then in front of the doorstep, Greg Lee made it 2-1. A one-goal game then, and Coventry certainly thought they could get back into this one. But less than 40 seconds later, battling in the right-hand corner, this time involved from the right point was Mark Smith. It went behind the net, and so strong was Phil Hill. And then a swivel and shot from McRae, the 12th of the year, 3-1 was the lead for the home side at the end of the second period. To period three, and we're coming to a close in the game. Time now is the 55th minute. It's being worked around on the power play. Blight and Bissonette get the assist on this one. McCray gets a second of the game. It is now 4-1. Surely that is game, set and match for the Cardiff Devils. But there's still chance for more goals in this game. Cardiff were trying to come forward and get a move going but the puck was given away and Bradley took full advantage. So with a two goal game with two and a half minutes to go, could there be a sting in the tail? Well, poor Thompson gambled, he pulled his netminder for into the final minute and the assist on this one go to Faulkner and Bissonnette. They're the ones working it left hand side and all that's left is for Blight to put it into an empty net. That's the end of the scoring. Now I said there was no such shenanigans in terms of multiple fights and bans at the end of the game, but there was some sort of fight in action. And you see here, players battling. Now what happens is, Venus is involved and then Domish gets involved. The man involved for the Cardiff Devils is Devon Didiamiti. Didiamiti got a match penalty for this incident. 
but on review by the referee Dean Smith and the disciplinary committee, that was downgraded. So Didi Amiti was not banned, but he went to the dressing room and this time he waves to the crowd, Domish to the box. But the final score, Cardiff 5, Coventry 2. Everyone knows about uh, the Paul Thompson story, the great success uh, in Coventry. You have a new team this year, really, a new identity and a new brand of hockey being played in Coventry. Uh, how are your fans responding to it? How are you enjoying coaching that style of hockey this year? Well, we haven't had it for a couple of years. And, and to be honest with you, we looked at the blueprint of, of Cardiff. We don't have the money of the, of the arena teams to go out and recruit and spend the, the kind of salaries that they do because they're bigger clubs. So, you know, I looked at what Cardiff had done over the last couple of years, you know, with, with, with the types of players they have. And uh, we've looked to not replicate it, but we look to bring in that style and make it tough for teams to come in and win. And, and you know, when you're going to come into the Sky Dome this year, it's going to be a battle. And, and we're not going to hide from that. And, you know, we're not everybody's favourite team right now because of the way we play, but that's life. That's, that's the way we're going to play. You're certainly playing very entertaining hockey. You're right in the thick of it at the moment. Uh, tonight was a big match for you. Last night, you get a big victory at home against Dundee, but Cardiff uh, suffers in Nottingham with a 5 0 uh, scoreline as well. Uh, your thoughts on tonight's match? Very emotional building, obviously, from a month ago, the match that was here and, and got a lot of attention. But uh, your thoughts on the way the game went tonight and, uh, and the way your team competed? Well, I thought we had a really good first period, and, you know, I thought we could have been a goal, maybe two goals up. I thought Osea was outstanding tonight for the Devils. And then, like what happens in here, I thought we broke down two or three times. The Devils had a great second period. They capitalized on it. But, you know, I look at the game overall, 5-2 hockey game. I don't know. I think, you know, we didn't really have our, some of our guys didn't have their scoring uh, boots on tonight. Osea was big. And, and, you know, the Devils always make it hard for you in here. And they took their chances, energized the building. And, you know, they're worthy winners tonight. You scored every match so far. You play as a forward. You play as a defenseman. Uh, your thoughts on your play so far as a Cardiff Devils in the Elite League? Well, it's just nice to get back on the ice and in an everyday schedule. Um, you know, it's I'm typically not used to getting many minutes, you know, in games. And coming here, that was part of the plan was to you know get back to my, you know, get back to big minutes and uh, and get back to playing because you know the role I have in the NHL, it's you know hard to play when you're coming off the bench every 10 minutes and you're frozen. And here. You know, it's just nice to get in that game mode and, and get feeling the puck. They had a big start again tonight. Uh, you scored the opening goal for the Cardiff Devils, and uh, we just spoke with Paul Thompson from Coventry Blaze, their coach. At 0-0, it could have gone either way, but you score that important goal. And, um, you know, talk a little bit about how important it is. Uh, we, we know that you're a winner. You know you want to compete, but it's obvious you're having fun, and it's obvious you want to lead and, and be a big part of this team. Yeah, I mean, the last couple of games we've been playing chase a bit, and, and we, really, we really talked about that in the dressing room before the game. I mean, we were lucky enough to come back against Belfast, but then last game, uh, you know, we were in Nottingham and not so fortunate. So we knew at home if we get the first goal, we're pretty good. So it, it was nice. I mean, Phil stood on his head the first uh, first 10 minutes. I think they had about 10 shots. So, you know, he kept us in it and, and gave us faith, and, and we, we repaid him with some offense. Well, best of luck in your Cardiff Devils career. We best of luck if uh, the NHL resumes in play. We've been fortunate to have you here in the UK while you've been here. Yeah, it's great. Thanks for everything. It's been awesome. For the Battle of the Bay. Wasn't too much of a battle, was it? A couple of hundred minutes when those two teams met only four weeks ago. Only 16 minutes in penalties this weekend in Cardiff. It happens like that though, doesn't it? Sometimes you build a game up, all that expectation, and it falls flat on its face. Right, let's take a look then at the results for the whole week in the Rapids listeners. Elite Ice Hockey League, we've seen the action. Let's recap those results. Started, of course, on Friday evening with the Dundee Stars going down 5-2 to the Belfast Giants. On Saturday, Bray hit Clan 2, Sheffield Steelers 7, and the Coventry Blaze 6, the Dundee Stars 0. Five Flyers beat out the Hall Stingrays 3-2, took overtime to do that, and the Nottingham Panthers a convincing 5-0 win over the Cardiff Devils. None of us saw that one coming. Belfast 9-1 over the Edinburgh Capitals. They did have their backup in goal, mind you. On Sunday, the Caps, as I say, turn a 2-1 advantage to a 3-2 loss. Holstein Gray 6-4 over the Clan and the Cardiff Devils a 5-2 victory over the Coventry Blaze. So let's see how those results affect the league table. We see that the Sheffield Steelers move to within one point of the Belfast Giants, whilst the Cardiff Devils move level on points with third place Nottingham Panthers and four points ahead of the Coventry Blaze in fifth place. Those important two points that we saw here tonight in Hull, well, they moved the Stingrays above the five flyers. Fife now four into the bottom two. So the league taking shape, top, middle and bottom. Some big games coming up this weekend around the league. May I suggest politely that you take one of those games in. Here are the fixtures for this weekend. 
Starts, of course, on Saturday, the 1st of December. Dundee Stars taking on the Coventry Blaze and the Sheffield Steelers take on the Cardiff Devils. Both games face off at 7 p.m., as does the match between the Brayhead clan and the Hall Stingrays, the third game in six days between those two teams. Jump forward 24 hours and at the Skydome Arena, the Coventry Blaze take on the Brayhead clan. Dundee take on Nottingham. Edinburgh, the Hall Stingrays. And in the big blue tent in Cardiff, the Sheffield Steelers are the visitors. So if you can't take in a fixture live, you'll be able to see the highlights of all those games on our next week's show, Friday the 7th of December, Sky Sports 4 at 6 p.m. Or on Saturday the 8th of December, Sky Sports 4 at 1 a.m. Well, folks, that's all from here in Hull, where we've enjoyed a great night. Very hospitable, the whole crowd, and a great victory for the Stingrays as well. Six to four over the clan. They are now top of the Gardner Conference. We'll see you back in the studio next week. Enjoy your hockey. Remember, take in a game. Sponsors of the Elite Ice Hockey League on Sky Sports.